Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here with a man plus. Now, they are expecting a PTC getting put out later this afternoon for Invest 95L for a pot potential tropical cyclone. And I think number 11 is next. I think we just had a 10. And they are expecting to become a hurricane at least by the time it goes towards the Leeward Islands. Now, it's been trending and it's been getting even more and more powerful. This storm just keeps getting stronger. It has maybe a potential to be a Cat 5 right after it goes by that area that I showed you where it has a great chance to strengthen up here and by the Bahamas. And I think it's going to take full advantage of that. Now, the one thing we got to watch for is we have this cold front coming through with this ridge. And we also have this high pressure building up in the Atlantic. This is what's bringing this storm further and further to the west. Now, we got to watch for the maritime, the, the marriage up of these two, because as this comes in, it will pull the system with it and then start heading to the north. But if it don't come in soon enough, it can keep going to the west if this ridge sticks around. Now, the reason why I mentioned this because it's pretty much a given. Everybody knows it's going to turn north. But after that, which way is it going to turn? Because everything that everybody is still counting on to happen is seven to almost nine days away for this ridging to actually go away and allow this to head north. Now, it is getting some problems with it, but you do see it is at 34 miles per hour winds. It is moving west at 15 miles per hour, so it is moving quickly. And by the time it gets all the way to right here, if you notice they shorten the cone, because this is going to rapid intensify. Now, the reason why I have a couple, just a couple worries, just not, not to be so sure about everything that's going on with this path, I just want to make sure you walk the big guy out as he's leaving, that's about it. We've had some bad experiences for something that was expected just right in this region for something to come in this area and turn. For a lot of times, it did not turn, guys. So we just got to walk this big guy out. That's pretty much what we're making sure that does happen with the storm because it keeps getting stronger, and that is very worrisome because if it don't get walked out, when this marriage comes together of this surface low and this trough coming through and this ridging disappearing in seven to 10 days actually still shows true, then we'll be okay. If I showed you impacts for something seven to 10 days away, you know it's gonna change. Now you can also see as we finish going through the severe weather for today, we still have that threat for tornadoes. Now it has moved just a little further north towards Northern Wisconsin and Northern Minnesota, I will show you. And there is some chances for some high winds, even some damaging winds passing through as the swan goes on but you see all the cold air temperatures that comes in and swoops all the way in all the way until saturday and sunday really far to the south and the southeast as this hurricane potential major hurricane potential cat five comes to the west still eating on them warm temperatures in the sea bringing nice cool temperatures to y'all all the way along Day and deep all the way until the week after that as well. Remember, this is for the rest of the month and part of October. While this forms up to something very huge, and on this model run, it gets pushed out. But you can literally see how far away that point is. That point is towards the end of the run. 174 hours away from hoping that that still stays true. Now, this is going to bring some nice cooler temperatures, some 40s and 50s down, and this will come lower and lower as you go all the way towards this weekend. Now, when you get to Saturday, it's going to come pretty far down to the south, and as you go through Sunday, it's going to come pretty far to the south. But remember, this is staying all of September. So as you go through next week, you're going to stay, have cool temperatures overnight, a little warm-up throughout the day, cool temperatures overnight, and this little rocking is going to happen all of September. Now, the latest update from National Hurricane Center is still at 100%, guys. It should still just be a PTC out for this potential tropical cyclone because there's going to be impacts towards the northern Leeward Islands more than likely. Now, if current trends continue, advisories will be issued out later today on a tropical cyclone moving west, northwest at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the central tropical Atlantic. Additional strengthening to a hurricane is likely later this week while the system moves over western portions of the tropical Atlantic near or to the northeast of the northern Leeward Islands. So when this comes out for today, if some, if anything else produces for today and it comes out today tropical, anything today, I will post that video unless you see the new cone that comes out from National Hurricane Center.
Also in the eastern Pacific, we have Tropical Storm Jova, which is going to be a hurricane, even a major hurricane, but we can right back down towards a tropical storm and no threats towards anyone. But this is what we're waiting for. You see this at the 500 millibar height. You have this big ridge and building over here in the tropical Atlantic. You have this trough coming down, and the GFS takes the trough a little bit further to the south. But you have this trough coming down, and as that ridge and keeps it south, it keeps going to the west. But then the ridge and goes away, and now the trough is going to get a hold of it. See how it pulls it around? Now the trough has gotten a hold of it. Now it's going to pull it wherever the trough goes, which is going to the north. Is going north with it. Now, that's as far as we can see. That is literally the end of the run with the Euro. Now, the GFS not only takes it very strongly, a lot of these models are showing Cat 4, Cat 5 guys, but then weakening back down after that as it gets closer towards towards the US a little bit. Now you see that it does capture it even stronger with the GFS and pulls it even further to the west on this run. This is on the 6Z this morning gets it really close towards New England states and it'd be the wind field and everything going on with this storm as well whipping a lot closer than normal and just the waves and the riptide currents alone if it was further away would be a dangerous situation so this is starting to look a little concerning even on a late uh, run right before this the zero z it was a little further away so on the previous on the latest run it's taking it a little closer just a little bit. So it's, it's still too far because it's still eight, nine days away. But this is why I'm trying to show you how far away this thing still is. Because not only is it going to take that northern wobble as this ridging goes away, if the ridging stays longer, it's going to keep going further to the west. But so far, according to just the chance for a tropical depression with the euro, you can see that curve that is expected because of that ridging weakening back and that trough coming through pulling it up. And that is what we see on all the, the model runs. But we see them all very strong. They're either a Cat 4 or a Cat 5 on these runs. That was a Euro. This is the Canadian. Same thing. It sees the ridging. It sees the turn. The first turn so far. The GFS. You see that first turn. But then it does a little wobble to the west a little bit right there. That little wobble to the west is what we need to watch. Now, as far as the Leeward Islands, it looks like, according to the Euro, it comes by y'all as you go through your Saturday. Starting getting some banding going on, so you might have some whipping of some banding that whips on the northern half of the islands all the way to St. John's, all the way down towards Castry. So just be aware of that. And it's also going to be all the way through Saturday as that swings on by, and then Puerto Rico also in on it as you get some banding, which could whip some damage and winds and everything else with that. So just be aware of that. It depends how slow it gets moving. But I think it would be doing some rapid intensification right here. So this is where we got to watch this because easily when it gets that rapid intensification, it starts wobbling. And a wrong wobble can really go a wrong direction. GFS agrees with the Euro exactly on the location, just a little bit stronger. But they're both showing that it's going to get down towards 940 <laughs> or less, which would be a Cat 4, guys. So this is all showing a very big system is going to be over here. But still showing according to the GFS and the Euro, there's no big impacts yet that I'm seeing. Maybe an inch of rainfall could pass by as this comes by with the GFS, which showed a stronger system. And the winds, no damage in wind gusts so far with the Euro or the GFS. You might get some 20s as this big beast passes by. So far, picking up the strongest winds around 175, 176 miles per hour wind gusts. Right after five days. But we do need to watch it because a lot of these formed right in the beginning of September, guys. Just like we have right here. This is Hurricane Isabel. And Hurricane Isabel was predicted to go right here and turn. And instead, it went west right towards the Carolinas and Virginia. Also, let's not forget Hurricane Florence right in that time, guys. Category 4, a little bit further to the north and still went straight west, right towards the Carolinas. Also, God forbid, Hurricane Irma around the same time, right in the beginning of September, Category 5. And everybody remembers how bad Irma was, but it wiggled. It wiggled a little further to the south. Went right by Cuba and right down Florida. And remember, the ghost satellite has been seeing this path for two days now. And you can see that here. It comes in Friday morning, builds up pretty strong as it goes by the Leeward Islands, by Lesser Antilles. 
and then moves to the west and takes a southern track and goes right below Bahamas and Cuba. Same path, almost like Irma, except everything is totally off like an outlier. Because if you look here, it's showing it is barely even a tropical depression when everything says there's no shear, there's no dry air, none but precipitation in the atmosphere. There's, there's nothing against this system from getting even stronger. It's going through some very warm waters in the high 80s, but still stays very weak and weakens down as it goes on that path, though. It sees the path, but it don't show the Irma. So when we go to check the hurricane analysis forecast systems on A, you can see it has a lot of heavy precipitation, a lot of banding going on, but you can see down here in the bottom left that it goes through all these warm waters, sea surface temperatures, but then it goes through a lot cooler waters and just immediately starts downgrading because of that, because it's going into cooler waters. But showing by the time it gets to Saturday, it'd be a very powerful storm, even at that level of even weakening down some, still be some strong banding that would go right across the northern half of the leeward islands as it passes by for saturday so just be aware of that it looks like it might even last for sunday as well some whipping that's just going across as this big storms going north now the hurricane analysis forecast system b don't see that cold water and it sees it staying warm in nice warm temperatures the whole time just eating its way while it's staying very big and going through rapid intensification. That's what a lot of them are seeing. And you can see this here. So as it's eating all this temperature in the sea surface, it's going through 29, then going to 30 and 31. The pink ones are 31. I'll show you, they even got 32 degrees Celsius. That's going into the high 80s. Now you want to try knocking on the door of 90 degree sea surface temperatures. So it's headed more northern, and now it's feeding off those temperatures as it keeps going through. And there's no cooler temperatures. The cooler temperatures are way over here. All this 28, 29, this is all mid to high 80s. Then we see the 30s and 31s. This is getting towards the 90s. This is getting very strong, very hot waters is going into. And this run has it going towards a Cat 5, a 922 millibar pressure but shows it strengthens up very quickly in 72 hours going to a hurricane and then going quickly after that towards five days down to a 922. But showing also will be a bigger beast because it's strengthening even faster. And by the time you go into Saturday morning, all of the lesser Antilly islands are getting hit with this big banding as this comes across. For Saturday, especially the northern half after that, hanging around, getting a strong beating from that system. So the stronger the storm, the worse these bannings are going to be on the Leeward Islands. And then after that, it would be headed towards right above Puerto Rico. And this is what's very concerning. As you can see, there's not a lot of sheer effect in this system at all. It's just a, like a well-oiled machine. It's perfect breathing, nothing in the way. The outflow is bursting in all directions. It's just a strengthening storm of rapid intensification and maybe get some shear up here by this trough. Also showing that this dry air is not really in the way. It has a lot of precipitation in the atmosphere. It has layers of dry air, but it has layers of precipitation in front of its path as well. So I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. As you can see, as it passes through, it has such a strong outflow that it just pushes it all to the side and fills the atmosphere with precipitation. It just keeps growing. Latest intensity guidance has put it up to a strong Cat 4, even more now agreeing that it will become that Cat 5 very powerful beast. But this is a little bit of a wider view so you can see what it is I'm talking about. So in four days, we have this big ridging going on out here in the Atlantic. And this is what's carrying it to the west. And after you go five days, now it's going by the Leeward Islands, still have that ridging, but it dissipates as you go past six to seven days it just dissipates and this is what gets a hold of that trough and starts pulling it to the north this is literally at the end another thing you got worried for is this is the last few frames this ridging could build back up and if this ridging builds back up it's going to push this to the west even further 
And you can see all models agree on your Arctic Oscillation. That this cold front is coming down all the way through the middle towards the end of September. And you can see on the long range with the Euro, that this is not only going to start coming down towards the, end, the middle to the end of September, it's going to come down even further as we go towards the end of September, all the way into the Gulf Pop, probably, guys. Not like super freezing temperatures, but you will feel a lot better. It will feel like the fall is here, all the way to the beginning of October. Now, we still have these storms that's going to pass through for today, especially all through Minnesota, going through northern Wisconsin as well. All even along, got some nasty little storms. Overnight is going to build also from Missouri, Illinois, go right into Indiana and Ohio. That's overnight hours in northern Michigan for tomorrow as well. Now, tomorrow afternoon is going to kick right back up for the south. For northern Mississippi, Alabama, going through Arkansas and northern Louisiana. There's going to be some damaging winds coming through that part as well. And it's not widespread, but you can see how it brings a 40 and a 50 with it as it brings a storm for today. And as you go overnight into the early morning hours, that's when it brings those little bandings of 50, 60, even every now and then a cell of 70 across the south and the central U.S. And as you go forward tomorrow morning through tomorrow afternoon in the southeast, it brings some more 50, 60, maybe even getting to 70 on some of those cells as that comes down to the south. Before today, you do have chances for hail. You have a 5% and a 15%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat. You have chances for winds, damaging winds. You Not like yesterday, they did get hurricane force. I did see that. Today, you have a 5% and a 15% for damaging winds for today. Here's your cities and states as well. And you have that tornado threat. It has shrunk and moved a little bit. You have a 2% chance for tornadoes for today. And here's your cities in Minnesota. But you see it does cover over northern Wisconsin as well. So just be aware, it's not just Minnesota. I mean, just looking at the spaghetti models <laughs> myself, they, they starting to look a little concerning, guys. I mean, we, we do have a couple that's going west. We have a few that's going west more than just straight hooking and saying a turn. So, you know, it, it is a little concerning where they've got these little westward pushes more than we have the turning push. That's all I'm saying is we got to watch this big thing. It's, it's a big beast of a storm. And we want to make sure... That we push and, and walk him on out. Not push, but make sure we, we walk him on out. I will give you an update if I see this cone forming. I think it will form today. I think there will be a cone put out for this. It's looking pretty pretty serious. At least the impacts towards the Leeward Islands. They have to do this just so they can do watches for the islands. But thank you all for your time. I hope you have a very blessed day out there. Today I want to talk to you with Psalm 139, 1 through 12. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compass my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yes, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always gives you a peaceful life, a loving life. That's what life is about, is peace and love and helping others. I hope you have a very best day you can possibly have, you and your family. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you all so much for y'all prayers. Y'all are best.